<laughs> oh boy. I was just happy for the Lions and then the Pistons again. Goodness oh. gracious. Somebody said how we lose and we didn't even have a game. <laughs> what a season for the Pistons. It's, You're talking about man. a third year in a row that the Pistons fall to fifth. It's crazy. Fall to fifth as the worst team. Back to back seasons being the worst team in the entire NBA. I'm talking about historically now. Historically for the Pistons being the worst team in franchise history, you fall to number five. To number five. And you know what? Nobody was shocked. Nobody was surprised. But everybody was hurt. And you know what? The only people that have a that have the real reason that can really be hurt about this are the fans. That's who I feel for the most. As soon as I saw the fifth pick for the Detroit Pistons go up, my heart broke because this entire season, the last two or three seasons, interviewing all the fans, interacting with the fans, sitting down and doing uh, uh, written articles for fans, season ticket holders, people who are believing in what's going on. You talk about a, a, a franchise who this city has made sure they were top 20 in attendance. The Pistons have been between 12 and 19 the last four years as it relates to NBA attendance. And it's not just fluff numbers. I've been at the games. You guys have been at the games, Broder and KG. Mm -hmm. JB, you've been to some games. Have you been to some games this year? No, I did not. Look, Good there are you. times, there are times, <laughs> obviously the Good arena's man. not at a capacity, but the fans were still coming out and supporting. You look all across social media. People say, don't talk about the Pistons. You talk about the Pistons, you see people's passion. Why? Because the Pistons matter. They're one of our squads that have won three championships in the sea. How they are being run right now, to see the lack of success right now, to see the lack of coming through on the promises right now, you go through a rebuild like this, and this is what you have. I feel so bad for the fans because the Pistons, they worked for this. They worked <laughs> yeah. for this. I, I, don't, I don't feel bad for the Pistons. This is what they worked for. You knew what the odds were. You knew what the odds were. And you knew that this was the year to take the step forward, and all everybody did was sat on their hands. The reason why I'm upset is because the promise that was shown in the beginning versus where this thing went to as time continued to go on to see how this front office has been just operating and to see ultimately what happened with Troy Weaver and the fan, it shows the disconnect between the organization and the fans. Mm -hmm. I get it. I get it. I get it. The whole sell the, the team thing, that's never going to be something that ownership and fans are going to see eye to eye on. But it's a cry. They're crying out the same way they did when they did the Million Man March. The same way they did with the Ford family throughout the years. They're crying out like, do better. Yeah. Do better. Do better. That fifth pick last night, it wasn't a micro. I, I know people want me to get on here and be like, oh, Detroit versus everybody. Only aspect of me that feels Detroit versus everybody, yet again, is for the fans. The Pistons did this to themselves. They did this to themselves. That's you look right. at you look at the fact that Atlanta was in the play-in. You look at the fact that freaking Houston went from 22 wins to 41 wins. You look at the fact that San Antonio, they're in the top four. These are teams, though, that all have better rosters than the Pistons. And why does that matter? Because the new odds, the new odds say, hey, if you're going to be a slum in this league, we're not rewarding you. Mm -hmm. The Pistons have worked for this. The first time, maybe it felt like a little bit of, man, why are they doing this to the Pistons? But right now, this is all about how the Pistons have been run for the last, not just four years, but 15 to 17 years now. And this is not fun. It's not fair. This is... People, y'all don't deserve this because you know what? People say, you know, I'm going to turn away. I'm not going to look. I'm going to look. Pistons don't matter to me. And I get it. Engagement will go down a little bit. But people are still tapped in. Mm -hmm. They are. People are still tapped in, man. Shame shame on the Pistons right now, man. You shame on the Pistons. This, this, this sucks, man. <laughs> you know, I, I'm surprised. I, I thought I was maybe going to be the lone wolf in here being like, they kind of deserve it. In yeah. a sense, like they do, and they that's do. what you meant when you're talking about they, they they work for this, right? Like they they didn't get the job done. Why are we? Why would we cry about them getting the fifth pick when the odds were there? The odds were there's a better chance of them getting the maybe not a better chance. They had the highest chance, the better chance of getting the fifth pick than the first pick. Yep, definitely than the first four. Yep, and, and you know what? And, and that's what I'm saying. When you see this happen, this has happened every single year except for the K Cunningham year that Troy Weaver has been here. The Pistons have dropped in the lottery. What are you what are you gonna do? You're gonna continue to hedge your bet on that? Mm -hmm. You guys decided to to enter last offseason and say, you know what, we're gonna punt the cap space. We're just gonna hire a coach that might not jive with the young players, and we're gonna just sit around and assess this thing. Knowing that the coming draft class is one that if you don't get one or two, you're probably SOL. 
if you don't, if you don't make the plan, if you're not competing for the plan, if you're not showing some type of progress, what are you doing with free agents? So now you got all the cash space. What are you doing? What are you doing? Now it's not just a, a matter of overpaying because we've heard this for years. Pistons, they're going to have to overpay to get people here. Now it's a matter of no free agent is going to sign here. You're going to have to go to the trade market. You know what other teams are going to do? Load you up with crap because they know you are generationally, I'm yep. talking about by the decades, desperate right now mm -hmm. as a Pistons organization. I am so pissed at how this thing went, but it's 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 almost like poetic justice. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to give you a break to to gather gather yourself, let it sink Breathe. in a little bit more. I heard Kool-Aid. Yeah, man. you're talking about <laughs> – well, we see the Ready City Connect out. uniforms over there. You were talking Hi, about you were talking about the Troy Weaver, the disconnect between the fans. I think in the next this next segment, I'm going to ask you about another connect that maybe you know winds up on the Pistons or whatnot. But you got to tell them first about from your pat. You got to tell <laughs> Elite them about transition. Got gotcha. you, Broder. Gotcha. You know what? He can take the lion out. Lion makes me happy. <laughs> Tiger and, and Mr. Hooper and Alda Octopus, you guys are on time out. <laughs> but Mr. Lion, I'm taking you to Premier Pet Supply because it's hands down Michigan's best pet store. They have all the same prices and the conveniences of the big box and online retailers with one major difference. They've been family and locally owned for over 30 plus years. It reminds me of, it reminds me of the old Pistons owned by Mr. Davidson. R.I.P. man, R.I.P. 60 brands of food and nutrition experts to help you. Same day, local curbside and home delivery. Premier Pet Supply, give your pet the best at www.premierpetsupply.com. Come to any Lady Jane's Haircuts for Men and claim your throne for a king's treatment from one of our talented stylists. Open seven days a week, walk in anytime. Just get to a Lady Jane's today and receive a precision haircut, scalp massage, hot lather neck shave, and a hot towel treatment. A haircut should not be a chore, it should be an experience. And that's exactly what Lady Jane's has to offer. Open seven days a week, walk-ins are always welcome. There's always a location near you. Lady Jane's Haircuts for Men, it's wicked awesome. And with the first pick in the 20... What's up, everybody? Neil Rule, Big D Energy, Woodward Sports Network, home of the Planet Fitness Studios. Let me tell you a little personal story about myself with Planet Fitness. Planet Fitness helped me change my life, and it can do the same for you. The best gym in the gym game. The clean facilities, tons of cardio equipment, tons of weights as well. And look, through all the price increases, inflation, all that, hasn't happened at Planet Fitness. Still a dollar down, 10 bucks per month, $24.99 a month for the black card as well. It's Planet Fitness, everybody, where your fitness is essential. We are the network for Detroit by Detroiters. Welcome to the Woodward Sports Network. Kool-Aid, what happens when you run a great business for over 50 years? You do the opposite of what the current Pistons are well, doing. You expand and you offer more products. <laughs> I'm not putting that yeah. negativity on Les Stanford. They expanded. They started Les Stanford Buick GMC. They still offer the same great service that They're their winners. customers have come to know and trust. Kind of like the 0304 Pistons. They still <laughs> offer that same service that customers have ago. come to know and trust. So go check them out on Woodward Avenue, just south of Nine Mile Road. <laughs> check out Les Stanford also in Dearborn today at LesStanford.com. Les Stanford Chevrolet. Uh, Together, let's drive. <laughs> I'm, I'm laughing to keep from crying. Man, I'm going to be 50 by the time they start winning again, man. Goodness, what you say, brother? I'm going to be 50 by the time they start winning again. Don't say that. Goodness gracious. Don't say that. That's as bodacious. <laughs> Bro, they haven't been a consistent winner since 2008. It is 2024. Like, come on, man. Wow, bro. I was a kid. What a, what a joke. I was a kidless Kool-Aid during that time. No kids during that time. Now right. I got four of them things, and all they know <laughs> is losing. Yeah. <laughs> four of them things. Four of them things. Well, what up, though, people? We appreciate you guys for choosing to kick off the morning with the Wake Up Woodward crew. We got four to five here. Shout out to the vet of the squad, Fennel Sam. He will be on Big D Energy today. <sighs> and we're still talking to these Detroit Pistons. It's that time. They got the fifth pick. They were the worst team in the league. <sighs> what? First off, before we get into the Pistons, what do you think of the draft lottery being structured the way it is? Like, do you have a problem with it? You know, it, uh, the goal is to avoid tanking. Like, yeah. that that's the goal. True, but the worst team in the league shouldn't get the fifth pick. Like, yeah. I can under—a uh, top three, fine, but the fifth pick? So like, you think maybe they just need to make a tweak like that <sighs> where, where you get the top a top three pick or a top two? I mean, I say that I'm setting this up because it's not like we stopped talking about tanking. 
You know, even yeah. with the new format. Teams still tank. Teams still tank. We know the yep. Pistons did last, not this past season, yeah, but two, two seasons, seasons ago. ago. Yep. Whether they admitted it or not, they were tanking. Yeah. Didn't yeah. work out for them. Didn't work out for them this year, even not tanking, just being bad. It, so it I, worked I for the freaking Spurs, dog. So Several years in a row. Is it rigged? Yeah. Or is Listen, it just lucky? The, the one thing I'm not going to do is switch up sides. I've always believed that these, these drafts, these draft lotteries for the uh, NBA, I've always felt like these things are not as transparent as they claim to be. Yeah, I'm not even going to say as they seem. And for some reason, the Detroit Pistons always find themselves on the bad side of these things. Yes, we got Kay Cunningham. And that was that was amazing. Right. I, I remember our reaction. We That was one of our first live reaction shows we ever did on Whooper Sports Network. It was the year that the Pistons got the number one pick. Went viral and all of that type of stuff. Yeah. And it was like, you know what? Maybe things are changing. Maybe maybe things are changing. But we got that number one pick, and the NBA quickly told us what they thought of K.A. Cunningham. Mm -hmm. and regardless, regardless of anything that he was doing out there on the court, top five clutch minutes, clutch points, um, going toe-to-toe -to -toe and getting accolades from all-stars and superstars all around the league, they said, hey, good job, Scotty Barnes. Hey, good job, Evan Mobley. You guys are those deals. And they told us that our guy, even though you picked him at number one, is not that deal. So when you kind of look at everything that's been going around with the Pistons, I don't know how you sit around and say that that thing is not rigged. I, it's, it, it gets crazy. I just, it's, it's just today is one of those days where I'm just like, even if it is, I don't want to give the Pistons organization that out. I don't, not, not this year. Last year, okay. Maybe the year before, maybe. But this year, no. I can't do it this year. What do you think about uh, the conspiracy theory going around? Trey Young is supposed to be the league's next, Steph Curry. They maybe want to get him into that number one spot, get the Hawks into that number one spot to help speed up that rebuild. Not that, And we haven't talked about the actual players in the draft. Maybe there isn't that guy out there, but want to at least reinforce Trey Young with some players. Even Houston, will they get third? You you talk about a player third. who's had tremendously more talent around them the last two years than Kay Cunningham and still can't do nothing with it. Yeah. NBA, keep going and propping up some of these other players. We've seen this before. We've seen this before. All it's going to wind up being is another propped-up NBA player going later in his career to try and join up with a bunch of other propped-up NBA players to go win a championship. That's what Trey Young's arc, in my opinion, is on right now. Look at the talent he's had around him. Can yeah. you imagine if Cade had that roster? Guys that can actually run the pick and roll, players that can actually shoot, players and teammates that can actually create for themselves mm -hmm. at a consistent clip. I don't mean like, oh, Sweet. That person scored 25 this game, but the next 10 are going to be probably under 10 points. Can you imagine that? So if the NBA want to continue to go and prop up Trey Young, who's continued to show he ain't going to do nothing with it, be your guest. I can tell you what's good for the NBA and what's always been good for basketball is when the Detroit Pistons, when they are the ones that are at the top. That's been when the NBA has been its best. So if they want to continue to go and do stuff like that, fine then. Fine yeah. then. And that leads me to my question with us getting the fifth pick now. How does this, this has to hurt us in the trade market because mm. that was the whole deal in the first place. Like we want to get a higher pick so we can maybe try to trade that to, to get a player that can help mm. fix this right now. But that severely brings the value down. Bro, listen, I was on the Bleacher Report stream yesterday. You want to talk about the value between number one and number five. That hurt. Yeah. Everything that the Pistons were talking about doing, look, if they land number two, land number three, Maybe the value can be protected to some degree, but now you're in a position where you got to start to think, what is the strategy moving forward? Yeah. Because your trade value just got significantly hurt. When you look around the fifth, it's either you go with a proven college player who may or may not translate. We were talking about a little bit before the show, Justin, or you go with one of these high potential guys from overseas for the G League Ignite. You're no longer in the running for the guy that, when you look at like an Alex Saar, you know that whether he becomes a superstar or not, you can see the basketball instinct. That's something that you can sell to other teams. And the number mm -hmm. one draft pick, that's always going to have a certain amount of trade value that the Pistons no longer have now. When you're looking at the fifth pick, now you got to ask yourself, is a strategy trade that fifth pick so you can get multiple shots at the good college players because all of the potential guys are going to go in your top ten. Do you go in – Do you go in, 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 in uh, what's the strategy? Is it best player available? Is it trade this fifth pick? Because yeah. what is that fifth pick going to even get you now? Right. I, that's that's the issue. LeBron? <laughs> that's the issue. Actually, that, that is not <laughs> going to happen because there are serious, deep conversations that Atlanta is thinking about actually picking Bronny James and 
clearing out some cap space to actually bring LeBron to Atlanta. Here we go. So, At number one? Mm -hmm. Here we go. Yeah. I, that wouldn't surprise yep. me. Like Black I already said, what's, what's Trey Young's arc? That's yep. what I just talked about. I wouldn't be that wouldn't surprise me one bit. You know what? Let's try and go and cherry pick some some stars so we can go out here and try and win this thing. Prop me up, prop me up, prop me up. That's what the NBA has done to these teams all around the league for a very long time. Yep. We've seen the Detroit Pistons have to kind of grit and claw their way if they were going to be winners ever. I think that that's what's missing from this right now. They don't have those types of players. I like the promise. I believe that they can develop into that. When you're going on almost two decades, almost two decades, bro, we're at a decade and a half of this type of basketball, you need players that are there today. You need players that are there right now. Yeah. You need players that can help these young players entering into the league get better. I wonder what Mehmet Okor would have been if he wasn't drafted to a team that had like Ben Wallace, Rasheed Wallace. Wow. I wonder what he would have been if he was drafted into this era. Because think about how much better it is when you got actual vets on your squad that know how to play, that can teach you how to play connected defense, that can teach you where you need to be on offense, that can boost you. There is no greater feeling for a young player entering the NBA. All these prospects I'm listening to, man, from Matas Fazulis to, to Zachary Sasha, all these guys are still saying, you know what, I I, I got to learn. I got to this, I got to that. This is not going to bowl well for the Pistons, in my opinion, if they do that. And if they do select with that number five pick, to me it's a sign that one of these other young players or two of them are on their way out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. A, how sick would Mehmet Okur be in today's NBA? Kind of fits his game perfect. Yeah. B, we're, and we're going to, when we talk about the Lions uh, rookie minicamp, there's going to be a theme of like wanting to learn from the older guys, the veterans, the veterans on the Lions team being there and willing to help the young guys. You bring up a great point just yep. of how young this Pistons team is. Who can, if they bring in a young guy, if they draft someone at five or continue to bring in young players, like who do they have to lean on? We know Cade's mature beyond his years, yep. but there's still an experience level of being a professional basketball player and just living life. Like the there, there's something different about going through the NBA and yeah. being a veteran. They don't have that guy. They don't. They don't. They don't. And, and that's hurting everybody, the young players as well as what we could be getting out of Kay Cunningham as well. It's going to hurt all of them. And the fact that they have to go this offseason and try and turn that on with a team now that's looking like its young talent is not as good as where Houston's was when they went and got Fred Van Vliet and Dylan Brooks, Jeff Green, and some other like veteran players to be able to step in and help take these young players to the top. And you know what? They didn't care if they undercut one of their young players. I understood the strategy of saying, you know what, these are our guys. We think that we're going to run with them. We don't want to undercut these young players, which is what the Pistons said. The Houston Rockets didn't care. Yeah. They had to send Cam Whitmore down to the G League for a little bit. Can you imagine if one of our young players got sent down to the G League? We'd probably be like, oh, the Rockets didn't care. We're mm -hmm. like, look, we're going to keep drafting best player available, which is what I believe the Pistons, if they're going to drive, need to do. I do not care about fit anymore because K. Cunningham can play both guard spots. So if there's a point guard in this draft that you think, you know what, next to K. Cunningham can be dope. There's a shooting guard. There's a small forward, a power forward, or a center. You got to go and you got to get that player if you think that's the one that will mesh well with K. There is no golden cows or calves beyond, in my opinion, beyond K. And there's no golden calf like position. There's no player on this roster that should just be given a position going into the next season. What do you think about Dalton Connect? Like, like <laughs> I, I, I know we'll, we'll talk more as the week goes on, and leading up to the draft, of, of course, yep. what are the best fits or what direction they should go, but. That's a name that just stands out to me at number five. I think he's projected at like the number seven prospect in the draft. And um, yeah. you got to see him up close and personal at I LCA, did. right? I did. And, and while well, you know much more about his game, the one thing I'll take away, he's 23 years old. And, and he's developed. He's gotten better each and every year. A little bit more mature. He's a little bit more mature. Does that benefit? Does that mean anything? It, it does. It does. There are some mocks now that are seeing him go like later in the lottery, like 10th, 11th, gotcha. 12th potentially just based on how the draft lottery actually played itself out. Um, but for me personally, when you're looking at some of these players, uh, if you're looking at kind of that guard wing, I'm looking at guys like Reed Shepard, Dalton Connect, but you're looking at a 6'3 player, 6'6 six, six player, but you're looking at players that can shoot the cover off the ball. When they're hot, they're hot. You're looking at players that can also create. They're not as fast or as athletic as Jay and Ivy, but you're looking at players that, in my opinion, are probably more complete basketball players and can mesh a little bit better next to a K Cunningham, no matter where they are on that perimeter. Uh, if you're looking for more of those potential guys that can handle the rock, but they're, they're a little taller, 6'9", 6'10", then you're looking at Mataz Bozellis. You're looking at Zachary Rishache, 6'10", and 6'9". Um, Rishache is, is probably the one that, that people are saying, you know, if you're not getting an Alex R, you want to get a Zachary Rishache. And the way the draft fell, 
it actually might bode well for the Pistons if he falls to five to say, you know what, we kind of got to take a flyer on this guy. A little he, bit of handles can shoot. The Rock. Um, he's an international player. He's from France? From France. From France, mm-hmm. Yep. And so is the uh, Sar, right? Alex yep. Sar? Yeah. Yep. It's no, it's Sar. Does it worry you at all of uh, the Pistons' history of drafting French players? It does, 100%. Yep. I, I would be lying if I sat here and told you it didn't. It 100%, 100% just makes me kind of, ooh, foreign international players in general. Yeah. When you take this thing back to Darko, it's just like, man, Davidas, Savitas, a lot of the, the draft and stash players, like, you know, they hit on the metal core. But other than that, Carlos Delfino. Carlos Delfino, I'll call that a hit. <laughs> oh. Technically a hit. Carlos yeah. Arroyo. Yeah. Well, they, they didn't draft him. him. They traded him. They didn't him. draft him. He had some swag, though. I like Carlos Arroyo. He had Royal. some swag. But it's like, it, it's, it hasn't been a fun ride. Yeah. It hasn't been a fun ride. And the NBA has been trying to figure out this tall kind of ball handler, shooter for a long time. That's why Darko was selected in the first place. So it's like, are the Pistons still out here chasing that prototype player today, 20 something years later? That that's, that's not wild. a good thing. That's why if that's actually true, that's not a that's not something to be excited about. You yeah. gotta be able to transform your organization. If they're still living in the two thousands <laughs> after being through however many coaching changes, front office changes, I know we got the president of basketball operations decision coming. Yeah, but likely at some point you would think before the draft, am I right? Yeah, but I just I'm 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 at a loss, man. Because yeah. I, I keep saying, and I hate to be a negative Nancy and keep coming up here and say I don't see how this works. But I genuinely do not see how this works. No president of basketball ops is going to come in and fix this thing right away. He can't. You're looking at at least another two to three years at the at the very minimum. Um, and and whoever it is, it's just this is not a good situation. You got a situation where there's still a lot of cooks in the kitchen. We don't know for sure whether. Tom Gores is going to release the reins to the president of basketball ops and let him make the decisions or or we, we just don't know. But I do not see a good way out of this situation, especially with us getting the fifth pick now that severely hurts our trade value. I don't see how this how this works going forward. I don't. I don't. The only way it's going to work is they're in a position now where they have to just press forward. You know, I, I know that Tom Gores or at least reports are that he's giving whoever the president of basketball operations is. The um, it will be his decision to make as it relates to Troy Weaver being here in the GM capacity or not. Now we haven't gotten word. Uh, I, I guess early on the reports were that the G this PBO is going to come in and have literally all the power. We don't know if that's for sure. I haven't seen that confirmed, but that's been in a couple different articles from the Free Press to the Athletic as well. Yeah. Uh, so I don't know. I don't know I, if. They bring in another PBO, and the structure is still kind of operating the same yeah. as there being this kind of shadow contingency ahead, above the front office. Then we're running back into the same thing. There's no hope. If there, that's the case, there's no tough. hope. It's but, tough. Like, okay, I don't mind you being a negative, negative Nancy on this topic. They don't have an identity. They, they don't, don't have a clear route to getting out of this. They like, don't. There's not one or two players away. It, it's they got to like um, they got to rebuild this team. Yeah, but a team made up of. Pretty good young players. It just doesn't work. And, and young players is not going to get it done. When I sit down and I watch the NBA playoffs, man, I just I don't even think the 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 Pistons can get to a level where they're getting bounced in the first round. Right. Like with some of the talent that's in the NBA playoffs, like you can't do this with a young roster. The NBA is not built to facilitate really young rosters. Like you have to have veterans, but you have to have the right veterans. We've tried the veteran route, but we we pulled the wrong veterans. You you bringing in guys like Joe Harris and 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 Bo uh, Bo, uh, Bogey, and it's like it's just. I don't I don't know, man. As I, I just there's no way that they can get out of this within the next two to three years. I just I do not see it. In the NBA, things can change quickly, but if they keep doing business as usual, they're not gonna get out of this in two to three years. No. There is a path for them to be able to use their cap space to bring people in and just knock on the door of the playoffs. Because that's what the Pistons have been most of Gores' tenure. An eight to ten seed team. Mm-hmm. A team that'll make the playoffs and get swept. A team that'll finish ninth or tenth every single year which fits them, but is that what you want? When you look at what the Lions are doing, when you look at what the Tigers are even talking about doing, when you look, listen to Steve Eisen with the Red Wings, they're not just talking about building for quick success now. Like we saw the Pistons um, one time in the SVG, one time in the Dwayne Casey made the playoffs and get swept. They're building for longevity. Mm-hmm. They're building for longevity of success. They're building for the opportunity to play for a championship and potentially win it. That's where the Pistons have to get, and that's not fixed in two to three years. Yeah. That's where I want to agree. That is a long with. ways away. Exactly. Can they go out there and, you know, mess around and, and put together a squad that can make the play in and then 
this next year or in two years. They can do that. They can do that, but I don't know how much is going to matter. That's my thing. That's why I was that's why I was so invested in 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 the restore. That's why I was so invested in the start to the restore. When you're talking about, you know, a Kay Cunningham, an Isaiah Stewart, uh, a Sadiq Bay, and a Jeremy Grant, a Kelly Olinick, right off the bat. Right off the bat. I, I'm cool with that. Right. I was cool with that. I was invested. But when you look at where this thing is going now, it's it's utter trash. And again, my heart continues to go out to the observers, whether you're buying tickets, whether you're buying merch. Whether you're buying cable packages, whether you're supporting at home, watching the stream, still staying invested, reading the articles, getting on socials, my heart is broken for you all, man. I had so many memories at the Palace of Auburn Hills. I still remember watching the Pistons in the finals, their away games, watching it down at Shane Park with my pops and a whole host of Detroit people. Like, I remember this stuff. I remember being in the city for the parade. It, it's crazy to me that there's a whole generation of people that don't even understand what it was like. Yeah. That to me, man. Or how good of a franchise this really is. Like, yeah. this is a story franchise. Bro, we cried over the wins. We cried over the losses, man. Like, I, uh, bro, I cried when Robert Ory's shot went in mm -hmm. at the Palace. Yeah, I'm just, nah, I'm was, just being as serious as I can be. Like, this is not stuff that people, it's just a game. We all talk about what our sports scene means to the city of Detroit, and it's really about it being one big family reunion. All of us sitting in this room right now from different backgrounds, different walks of life. Different, you know what, different futures ahead of us. But we're sitting here right now because of what these sports teams have continued to mean to us. So it's like, man, my heart is broken for these people. It sucks. Because yeah. the Pistons is that squad that when they're jumping. Man, I remember I remember pseudo parties in the parking lot of the Palace of Auburn Hills. Because you, oh, you, you knew what was going to happen. Yeah. You're going to be stuck in there for at least 30, 45 <laughs> minutes trying to get out. So people Memories. turn up the music yeah. and people start having fun. We used to get out the car and start dribbling and such. Ghost ride the whip. Yeah, bro. Well, yeah. I wish I could have done that. You know, you're giving me ideas right now. Hey. <laughs> Can't do that LCA, but. Yeah. I, man, my heart goes out to the to the fans, man. I, got, I How do you even keep supporting this product? Because you, you look at the situation with Bally Sports as well. You're going to have to pay more to watch more garbage. Like, it just... It, it even bring that... That's a fantastic point of, of Pistons being shown on Bally, too. Like, yeah. is that whole thing going to be figured out by October? Probably not. Probably no. not. To be determined. And who wants to pay more to watch this product? Like, as, as a fan, I don't see how you continue to support this, man. At least not in the interim, because there's no quick fix coming. No, there's nobody to save you. Like, you're going to have to go through this, swallow your medicine, and, and just deal with it, man. But... Like I said, it's I, I hope that they get the right guys in place to to push this thing in a proper direction because it's going to be a while before we see winning. It's going to be a while. Ball. Like yeah. I like I said, I, mean, I, I think the last thing I'll say on it is it's crazy where you know I'm doing some more digging around, talking to some sources and such, and when I hear from my sources that a person like Dwayne Casey, when you talk about potentially losing your head coaching job, being moved to the front office because from what I'm hearing, you're pushing back on the organization selecting Killian Hayes, you're pushing back on a lot of the decisions we heard that we saw come to fruition. Like, trust me, guys, that's the Damn. crazy part. You want to talk about getting continual confirmation that the front office is so splintered. It was crazy to me to, to understand and to hear via some sources. I'm telling you guys, confirmed sources, that Dwayne Casey was against a lot of this stuff, that in terms of the way he thinks as it relates to building a squad mm -hmm. is more the Brad Stevens way out in Boston. Somebody that I heard he's had some uh, some conversation with. Somebody I heard that he's been long a fan of how he's put his teams together. That, to me, it gets crazy because before Detroit, there's nobody in the basketball world that would ever, 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 ever put some dirt on Dwayne Casey's name. Yeah. They were like, you know what? He might be at a limit where he's not going to be able to get it done with the Raptors, but he was still coach of the year. He was still a, one of those coaches that was intimately uh, involved with putting together those Raptors, and you listen to players like uh, like like a Demar Derozan. Mm -hmm. You listen to to uh, sheesh, man, a uh, Kai Kawhi, uh, 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 Kawhi Leonard, but but Leonard, uh, not Leonard. Um, who was the other guard? I forget Kyle the other guard. Lowry. Kyle Lowry. Wow, you, you Mike listen. Lowry. You listen to <laughs> to the center. I don't know, even know why I'm forgetting these names. I'm so. Emotionally Jonas strong. Yes, thank you, brother. I got thank you. When you when you listen to these people talk, they say their success was because of what Dwayne Casey brought, not just as a coach, but as a leader. Yeah. yeah. And so it's like to know that we had a person like that in the organization saying, "Please don't pick Killian. Please don't make this pick. Please don't make this signing. Please don't make this trade." And that person was just basically, "Hey, we're gonna move you over here. 
we're going to move forward with this way. And then it all falls apart. It's just like, goodness yeah. gracious. And they'll be a damn fool if they let him leave the building to go to Boston, man. Because somebody that's that respected and that can connect to the youth like Dwayne Casey could. Yeah. Yes, we made a big thing about the lineups and stuff as as he was coaching. But nobody has been able to connect to this young team better than Dwayne Casey in recent years, man. So if they let him you know get what? out the building, that's a big And, and I see Chuck saying, Kool-Aid, but why would Casey stay with the team and not leave? Seriously. Because Casey loves Detroit. Casey came here, him and his wife and his kid, they live here. They give back here. They made a commitment here. When they when when Casey was hired here, it wasn't just um as coach. He made his commitment, and these are in articles, you can go back and read it, to the city of Detroit and said, This, I want this to be my last basketball stop. He said, after coaching, everyone knew he's gonna wind up in the front office. You go back and you look at our Woodward Pistons coverage from back then, we continue to tell people he's not going away. He's not going away. This was a man who was invested in everything Detroit and wanted to be one of those guys that could look back years from now and call it home. Where does Dwayne Casey sit? Amongst the people. He's not sitting in press. He's not sitting in media. He's not sitting up in the suites. No. He sits amongst the people. What do I see at each and every single game? Coach Casey, Coach Casey, Coach Casey. Can I get a picture? Coach Casey, you're a good guy. From the fans to the visiting team, because that's who he sits behind, the visiting team, to hear scouts talk about him. It's like... It just it hurts my heart because this organization needed the right basketball minds in it, and it seemed like they shelved one of the better basketball minds for some of the ones that the game has just passed by, and that to me is it's 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 disappointing, man. It's disappointing. It's disappointing. You need to go to the dispo. You need to-